Unity in Christ transcends ethnic, social, and spiritual distinctions. Simply put, at the foot of the cross, it's a level surface, folks. Whomsoever, whomsoever shall believe will be what? Saved. There is level ground at the foot of the cross. God sees sin as black. He sees righteousness as white. He sees us as white, as washed through the blood. So he sees red too. God doesn't see color except for black, white, and red. And this is where we fail as the Christian church. We don't hate sin. And we're more prone to be judgmental and hate the sinner because of the sin. And that's not what we're called to do, folks. It doesn't matter if you're white, black, brown, yellow, green with purple polka dots. We all have the same love from God that he gives. And if we stand in judgment of other people, shame on us. Because that is not a place or a position that God wants his church to be in. We're all one. We're all loved by God. Remember, the foot of the cross is level. For whomsoever. God's grace is meant for whomsoever that believes. Romans 10, 12, and 13 says, Since there is no distinction between Jew or Greek, because the same Lord of all richly blesses all who call on him, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That needs an amen, people. Amen. Thank you. And again, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, for we are all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all given one spirit to drink. A couple of weeks ago, JP talked about the Abrahamic covenant. And so as it says in verse 29, if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So to be Abraham's seed is the same thing as being his sons. But now we have the additional element of being heirs introduced by Paul. And we're going to talk about what does it mean to be an heir a little bit later in the text. But Paul states here as the main point of his argument, those who belong to Christ are part of Abraham's family, and hence they don't need to be circumcised. Remember, the promise was for everybody, not just the nation of Israel. The original promise that God made unto himself when he put Abraham into the sleep and made the covenant and walked through the animals by himself with a promise to himself was for the entire world, not just a certain select few, not just Abraham's descendants. All believers participate in this promise and are all are blessed as children of Abraham. So let's take a look back at the Abrahamic covenant in Genesis 12. God made the covenant with himself as a promise, right? <clears throat> Verse 1, 12, Genesis 12, 1 through 3. The Lord said to Abram, go from your land, your relatives and your father's house to the land that I will show you. You know, we've already talked about this, but I just want to use this as a reminder of what it means, this promise that God gave to Abraham, <clears throat> Abram. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse anyone who treats you with contempt. And all the peoples on the earth, all the peoples on the earth, all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. So if we've trusted Christ as our Savior, then we share that promise. 
We share in that promise that God made to Abraham. We share in that blessing. We've been united by him, with him by faith and are heirs with Christ. Let's move into, into chapter 4. Verse 1 through 3. Now I say that as long as the heir is a child, he differs in no way from a slave. Though he is the owner of everything, instead he is under guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. In the same way, we also, when we were children, were un, in slavery under the elements of the world. So what does this really mean? Paul is referring to the Christians as children before they were saved, right? So verse 1, as long as the heir is a child, he differs in no way from a slave. We've, we've had kids in our lives, I would assume, right? <clears throat> and, and those of you with adult children know that you never really stop being a parent, do you? <laughs> Ever. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it is. But... In the Greco-Roman society, though the child was an heir, though the child was under the household of the father, he did not own anything because the inheritance wasn't given to him. He was still an heir. He was still an heir, but the inheritance had not been given to him. Just like we as unsaved people, we're, we're, we're children, right? We're created in the image of God, but we don't have the promise because we haven't trusted Christ. We're not an heir yet until you trust Christ and put your faith in, in Jesus. They have no right. The children have no right. And really, in a very similar legal status as a slave, they own nothing, okay? So that's the unsaved. And remember, remember, the law was our guardian, as it talked about back in Galatians 325, right? The law is our guardian, the rules, and as trustees over us to instruct us. But as children, unsaved, we are not free and do not have a claim to our father's inheritance. Being unsaved gives us no claim. Being unsaved, we are living by our own means and methods. And like JP said last week, under the law, that is not what God wants for us. He wants to impart his inheritance to us. He wants to do that because he loves us, because he sent Jesus to die for us. He wants to do that. That can only be done by trusting Christ, though, to get that inheritance. That can only be done. Faith alone in Christ alone to save us from our sins. And if you haven't trusted Christ, what are you waiting for? <laughs> 